it's a beautiful thing to be in a place that you and your friends created. It's almost like a nest in nature. It's almost primitive as well. You build your shelter and you live with the beautiful compliments and you live with the kinks of the place. You build the home, but the home also helps build you as a person. So it's part of me in a sense, you know? Yeah, and all the people who helped, you know? I get to look at things and remember their beautiful smiles and how we laughed and shared an amazing time here. So out of college, studied construction technology, decided I wanted to focus my interests on some type of building. I uh, thought about the future of the planet and I thought, oh, maybe I'll focus on sustainable building. Then looked at all the options, went, did the internet thing, looked for futuristic home styles, stuff like that. And then Earthships popped up a couple times, but like most people, it's like, oh, that's interesting, but a bit, uh, a bit out there. Then you keep looking and eventually you realize that the Earthship is the full package. It does the rainwater, it does the food production heats and cools itself in the winter and in the summer months, works in Canada in all climates, and it's just fun to build, recycled materials, so eventually made the leap down to Arizona twice to help two builds down there, and then made the leap to build here in Prince Edward Island. There's two ways of going about it. I could either look for a nice piece of land in the woods, pay not too much money for it, and just not make it as fancy, perhaps in as finished as this one. But due to the circumstances of the land, it was a generational, it is right by a highway. We decided to go all out and sort of make it an example, a beacon for people as they pass to realize that sustainability is out there. You don't need to build a home out of tires, but you can contribute in whatever way you feel possible. When you come in, we did the open style, nice flow to the place. Open concept, it's only about 800, 900 square feet, so made the most out of the space we had. Used a lot of recycled granite on the countertops. Um, we got clay sand straw for the walls, which makes cob or earthen plaster, and that's just the natural color of PI's clay. Built our own cupboards, got some milled wood for the ceiling. Up the road, got the tires three minutes the other way at the local dump. Then the greenhouse, we got the island sandstone, which was a fun little project. Really made it unique to PEI. Did some bottle artwork, as most Earthships have. Some mosaics here and there. We did a CD mosaic backsplash. That was Jaden's ingenious idea he's seen online. The Earthship is a lot of recycled materials, south-facing glass wall to collect the sun. And then you use tires, about 600 to 1,000 of them, stacked like bricks along your wall. They act as the foundation and the wall. You could use concrete, but tires are recyclable and have less of an impact. You pound them with dirt, so they're about 300 pounds. And then you get it up as high as your wall is, and then you build a standard uh, roof after that, using conventional construction if you choose. And then you do a frost barrier igloo to capture the heat, so that when your south windows do shine in that sun all year round, that your tire wall and your mass can collect. So when the sun goes down, almost like the sun in a city with a bunch of concrete, you put your hand on the concrete wall, or the tire wall in our case, and it's still warm, and that almost acts as a battery over the winter. So The first year winter's performance was a low of 11, and that's without sun, winter days, minus 20 or 30 outside. And then last summer, as the airships tend to, it improved. The battery stored more heat, um, dried out some, which helps and the low is 16, so we, we assume this winter will be a bit above that, and uh, it's very comfortable. You could literally go uh, Canadian winter without your wood stove if you were up for it, you know. 16's not freezing, it's not 1921, but manageable. By the end of this year, we will have solar. We still will stay connected. Uh, we'll just do the credit system, and even if that means just being a producer of electricity instead of strictly a consumer, that for that fact alone will likely do it. We catch our own rainwater using conventional Earthship rainwater harvesting, steel roof into two large tanks buried outside, and by large 1,500 liters each, so 3,000 liters of water, which is gravity fed inside where it's pressured and filtered and then 
After that, it's just like regular home, except when you're done showering and washing your hands and brushing your teeth, it goes and feeds these lovely plants through aquaponics. Um, the roots go down and eat all that nutrients that you just showered off and that would otherwise be waste. And then after the plants use it, it goes outside to a conventional septic. And we do do a bit of food production inside and out, but um, we're developing our green thumb. Yeah, <laughs> cool. that's a lifelong progression, yeah. Whether you're building your own home conventionally or a tiny home or an earthship, you do want to take caution. You don't just want to dive into the deep end with an investment of your time and financially like that. One's just karma, like help someone else build first. So you know if it's even what you want to do. It's a lot of work, those tires. But after you do it once or twice, it's not so bad. But help another person build too, because then you meet the friends, you learn what it's about, you can ask questions, you can show your plan. Be like, what do you think of this? What do I have to worry about this? You know, you develop those relationships. My girlfriend, Tamara, helped out a lot here. Um, two exceptional, awesome friends. I'll do a shout out, Cole and Becca. They were in Arizona with me and they came up here to graciously give their time and effort. And th those wouldn't have developed if I didn't at first go out and put a bit of my sweat into a, someone else's project. So it goes around like that. So that's the first one. The second one is we're building these to lower our footprint. Maybe a smaller design is a better design. You know, think permaculture and stuff like that. Bigger is not always better. So even this one, I know if I do another one, it's going to be half the size. It's going to be like tiny home meets earthship. And then the third one, which is like any building or any endeavor that you go into in life that's meaningful and is high stakes. You might want to plan, plan, plan. You know, do your homework so you can avoid those huge pitfalls. There's three earthship volumes that you can read and have a very good insight. The plans are great, but even better than the plans, I'd help build.